Bona locale, my garden of roses. Let's take some time to talk about the house vote to release the memo and McCabe's resignation. Now, the House Intelligence Committee voted last night to release the classified FISA memo, which describes the role of the falsified Trump dossier in the trump russia investigation, pretty much precisely on schedule with what I had predicted two weeks ago. Despite remaining mostly quiet on the subject, for the last two weeks, House Democrats have now come out in force to condemn the vote that they had lost, citing national security concerns and political interests as their reasoning for thinking the memo should not be released. However, it's very unlikely that national, concern, uh, national security concerns can be found in this memo, and even if they were in a four-page memo, it would be very easy to redact that information before it's released publicly that as with regards to political interests, they had month, they had weeks now to come out with those concerns and no one has until this point, save a couple Republicans who got on the train early at the end of last week. But at the same time, none of them were speaking out while nearly 100 representatives on the Republican side who had seen the memo were voicing their opinions very loudly about the concerns this memo and the matters that they're related to brought forth. Now that the vote is passed, President Trump has five days to veto its release, though there is no indication that he will. Last week, the president tweeted about the subject, showing tacit support for its release. It was California Representative Adam Schiff, a Democrat, who made the public announcement about the vote late last night, calling it a very sad day for the committee after the motion was passed completely along party lines. This, of course, was echoed by many other members of the Democratic Party who were on the Intelligence Committee, who had absolutely no interest in this coming out because, for lack of better words, it makes them look terrible. And honestly, not supporting it only makes them look worse. Though Democrats had written a counter memo, which was also voted upon to be released, that vote did not pass, and as such, the only memo that will be released is the FISA memo, which has maintained a steady discussion and argument in the mainstream media and on social media since it was announced two weeks ago. The classified memo in question was written by Intelligence Committee Chairman Representative Devin Nunez and co-authored by Representative Trey Gowdy. And according to what has been said by near, the nearly 100 rep, uh, Republican representatives who have taken to the television news and social media to speak as much as they could on the classified subject, this memo alleges that the FBI used the repeatedly debunked Trump dossier, which was funded by the Clinton campaign and produced by former UK intelligence operative Christopher Steele, as well as the very partisan private intelligence group Fusion GPS, in order to build their case regarding collusion between Trump and Russia in the 2016 elections. News began coming out of the White House, FBI, and news outlets shortly before the vote that Deputy Director Andrew McCabe had quietly decided to announce his resignation from the, his position in the FBI. A curious timing, given he still has 50 days more before his full retirement benefits package would expire and the knowledge that the House was voting on the release of that memo. He will remain on leave until March, when he will officially retire. McCabe has been under fire since he took up the reins between the firing of James Comey and the appointment of Director Christopher Wray for his connections with the Clintons and former Virginia Governor Terry McAuliffe after, his, after McAuliffe's wife had received substantial donations from both of those parties in her unsuccessful run for Senate in 2015. However, McCabe has been unpopular with both parties, not just Republicans, and shortly after he took up the temporary leadership in the FBI, Democrats were demanding his resignation alongside Comey for their releasing of the FBI letters which detailed the investigation into Hillary Clinton's email server, which posed a severe national security risk, but Comey eventually decided he would not pursue charges over. Between this vote to release the FISA memo and the announcement of McCabe's resignation, we're beginning to see a very large shakeup in Washington, something one might describe as a draining of the swamp 
which President Trump repeatedly expressed his interest in doing throughout his campaign for presidency. That said, neither of these events were spurred on by Trump himself. Rather, the result of House Republicans fighting for transparency in an otherwise convoluted situation to which they're held to confidentiality. And though FBI Director Ray threatened to resign last week when Attorney General Sessions recommended he fire McCabe, President's Press Secretary Sarah Sanders came out today to announce that the President had nothing to do with that decision, and McCabe's resignation comes of his own decision. One of the most important things I think is important to recognize in all of this is just how frequently the Democrats have acted against the idea of transparency. We have uh, more than just this, but the release of the email of the uh, the FBI letters regarding the uh, Hillary Clinton's email server, which were in which even people who were on the Democrat side were roundly condemned and demanded to be fired for their release. And now we have the Democrats one year later pulling the same exact arguments with regards to this FISA memo, <laughs> stating that, oh, it's a national security risk, just like it was a national security risk to release those FBI letters about Hillary Clinton using a private and unsecure email server in place of the command and control con uh, managed servers, which uh, all government email is meant to go through. The Democrats don't appear to have any interest in being truthful or open or transparent with any information right now and are voting against everything, trying to play the exact same game Republicans played under the Obama administration, but with far greater consequences to such decisions. They're not thinking their actions through. They're mostly just trying to block anything they can, especially anything that would require a 60% vote, or a two-thirds vote for that matter. And the resignation of Andrew McCabe only makes these, this situation that much more interesting because McCabe would identify as a Democrat in all of this. His position as, uh, as temporary director until the appointment of uh, Christopher Ray in August of last year was uh, based on, uh, one, his position as uh, deputy director, and two, the support of certain Democrats within Congress. And yet other members of Congress were completely interested in his firing due to the fact that he was involved with the release of those letters. But this is all information that is absolutely necessary for the American people to hear. We're not talking about, you know, the actual FISA court uh, documentation that led to the wiretapping of, um, oh God, what was his name? Carter Page, the wiretapping, the alleged wiretapping, I should say, of Trump Tower and the Trump campaign offices. What we're dealing with here is a memo written on the subject by uh, the chairman of the Intelligence Committee and a member of the Judiciary Committee whom he trusts quite a lot. And I, I will say, I trust quite a lot as well. I'm not a huge fan of Devin Nunez. He's kind of shady, he's kind of questionable, but I do trust Trey Gowdy for the sheer reason that he is one of the best lawyers that I've seen in the House of Representatives right now. And when he argues and when he questions, he leaves nothing he leaves nothing to be wanted. He's very good at his job, and if he wanted to release this memo, I doubt he would have allowed this memo to have any national concern national security concerns within it. And besides, anything that's confidential can be, before it's released, anyone can say, oh, this poses great national security risks. But I, I assure you, once we get to the point five days from now, though well, I guess five days from last night, when this memo is released, no one's gonna be talking about the national con security concerns about the memo. We're gonna be seeing ma mainstream media, as they do, attempting to spin or, or dismiss this in any way possible, if not going through the, the uh, 
going through the motions to completely distract from the subject instead of actually addressing what this memo says. You can be assured, though, that I am going to spend quite a lot of time going through and breaking down this memo line by line as soon as I'm able to. With regards to the firing, excuse me, the resignation of Andrew McCabe, he has been a controversial figure for both sides, and his position in the, uh, in the uh, FBI has been a, a burden on them. And if the FBI wants to get past this point of corruption and uh, constant questioning, they absolutely need to, as one might call it, drain that swamp. Now, does this mean that Christopher Ray is trustable? I honestly don't think so. The man is just as much a political fighter as James Comey was. And while his appointment is slightly more, slightly less suspect than the entire history of Comey's blatant support for Hillary Clinton and attempts to pursue Donald Trump on any charges possible while dismissing any charges against Hillary Clinton possible. I highly doubt we'll be seeing Christopher Wray in the White House, excuse me, in the, in the FBI uh, for the rest of, you know, he might last out the year, but I think he's going to end up having to be replaced as well. And honestly, that would be a great thing. Seeing the FBI go through a rotation seems like the interests, the be in the best interests of, well, the ground pounders who work at the FBI, because there are a number who are out there on 4chan, on 8chan, on message boards who are going out of their way to very, very secretively leak information and push people in the direction to understand that the FBI is extremely corrupt at this point and needs to have a rather full rotation of its leadership in order to see a much more effective uh, highest military, or excuse me, police force in the country do its job appropriately. That said, I don't have extreme hopes for that being the complete case because the FBI, since its time under uh, J. Edgar Hoover, has been one of the most terrifying arms of the government, uh, essentially being a secret police for at the whims of either the president or the party who controls them, depending who's in power. And right now, the FBI isn't on Trump's side, and I highly doubt they're on the American side. And while there are good men and good women working in the FBI, they don't hold the positions of power which allow them to make sure that the entirety of the FBI is operating the way it should. I also think that what we need to see is a proper charter signed into law by Congress. This is something that I've talked about repeatedly. Despite the fact that the FBI has written up a charter, there is nothing to hold them to that charter as the idea when it was brought about after the um, after J. Edgar Hoover retired under the Carter administration. Uh, it went through Congress for a while, but then under the uh, Reagan administration suddenly disappeared and no one was talking about it anymore. But we need this FBI charter to be addressed and made into the law of the land for them so that they can be held to account by our government and not a freewheeling federal secret police that do as they please should they disagree with a senator or president. Thank you all so very much for watching, and if you enjoy the show, please consider commenting, liking, or if you like everything I do, uh, heading over to Patreon and supporting me there. Otherwise, I will see you next time, and bonsoir. Mm -hmm.